Hey guys, we've come up um, Alan Marth tonight. We've uh, we decided we was going to come up and do a bit of flatty bashing, maybe target a few um, a few other species as well. And the sea's come away, the sea's lifted. It's quite rough out there. Well, as a result, what it's done, it's pushed all the weed up the estuary. So we're having quite a few problems with weed at the moment. We've had a couple of bites. I don't think it's anything um, anything major. It will be small flatties, but we've got. We've got the rods out. There's me, there's Kirsty, there's a nephew, Gaz, who's, who's back out there. Um, we're just going to stick it out for an hour or so, and if the weed continues, then we're going to move to a different mark. Base we're using, rigs we're using, all we're using is rag with two up flappers. It's a dead easy, simple setup, and it does it's proven. You know, it's a proven, uh, proven setup as well. So what I'll do, I'll. Um, I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. The setup we're using, I've just got my little uh, mustard viking rod. Kirsty's using her sonic black with a couple of small fixed spools, 4,000 size fixed spools. Nothing fancy. The um, 25 pound braid on mine, 15 pound mono on Kirsty's. You see the tide's pushing in now, and the, the amount of debris that's in the in the water's just it's just unreal. It's um, it's a bit of a pain in the arse to be fair. You can see it all over there. We've got Kirsty's gas over there. Give us a wave, gas. The setup he's using. It's an old century formula. Can't remember the um, the exact model, but it's. It's a cracking little rod. It's designed for this sort of work. Clean, clean estuaries. Just again with a with a cheap fixed ball, twenty pound mono. Jobs are good. Un. Just got a lovely little rattle on my rod there. I'm feeling it's a little flatty. I don't know if it'll. Um, I don't know if it'll come back or not. One of the tricks with flatties is they'll sit and they'll work themselves up the worm, they'll work their way up. Oh, there we go, definitely a little bit there. And they'll work themselves up the worm. Now we're using small lugs, you're only using size twos. But you don't want to leave it too long, otherwise they'll get deep hooked. One of the other things that's worth worth doing with, with flat is they're quite active predators. People don't think they are, but they, they are actually quite active. Predi you know, they do predi um, predate quite heavily. Sometimes, I mean, we're using plain leads. Sometimes it's worth just just pulling it back a little bit. It just entices them to chase it. I don't think there's anything on that. I think it's probably nicked my bait and swam off. But on a plus note, I can't feel any weed on it. There's not much weight, so I'm hoping the tide's pushed it all further up the river, in which case it can stay up there. We'll leave it for a bit. I don't, um, I don't think the fish is on it. If it is, it's tiny, tiny, tiny. I think I do think it's nicked my bait. We'll bring it in, we'll have a look. Show you the rig I'm using as well. Big. 
dead simple. Tiny little weight. I mean, that's three ounce. Is it three ounce? Two ounce. It's two or three ounce, I can't remember. A couple of stop beads. Small lugs. Short smuds. I think it was a little flatty. One of the reasons I say that is what you'll tend to find is, as I say, flatters will work this work their way up the worm. Now I always leave a tail dangling on these, so it moves in the water, and it's just a bit of visual attraction. If it was, if it had been crabs, it'd have been shredded all the way down there. Usually, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's general rule of thumb is, but because it's been nipped on the end, I think it was a small flatty. But we'll rebet and I'll show you how our, our bait up as well. It's just, uh, I know there's a couple of other videos on YouTube. I'll say the small locks. I think uh, totally awesome. I think uh, Graham Pullen uses this method as well. Find a decent sort of size worm. We don't want anything too big. Just a lot of people go straight through the mouth. Now, if I'm putting cod baits on, I'll go straight in through the mouth, straight down there. But I'm not. What I do? About half inch down, go into the worm like that. Thread it up. It's a bit awkward because they're such small hooks. And then thread it over the eye of the hook. Just leave it like that. And that's how I, I mean, as you can see it, it, it moves around more naturally. And what the flatties do is they nip at the tails. So it's always worth leaving leaving the um, the bite and letting the bites develop. But you've got to be a little bit careful because with us using small hooks, there is a chance you'll deep hook them now. You deep hook a flatty, what a lot of people do, try and dig it out and go up through the gills and that, well it, it's a surefire way to damage the fish. Easiest way is just clip the line as close to the hook as you can get it because the hook's all rust out. You know, just clip the line and just let the fish go with the hook in its mouth because the hooks after three or four days they'll start dissolving, the fish will be fine. You know, I mean, I've, I've caught cod before now with, with three and four hooks in them and the hooks are, you know, as soon as you, you, you got them, you get hold of the hook and it just disintegrates. And the fish, obviously, is fine because it's still actively feeding. So if you do get a deep hooked fish, just clip the line as close to the eye of the hook as possible and just let the fish go. The rig Gaz is using is just a clip down rig. It's got a few beads on it as well. Up there, we've just got just a flying flying hook up there with a few beads on. You know, but it's a very it's a very controversial thing, beads. As regards to fish, some fish love them, some fish don't. I personally think flatties and whiting, I think, adore beads. I think for species such as cod, I don't think it matters too much. I think they're more in, into the scent. But again, little four ounce, little bomb on there. And that's it. Kirsten just had a little rattle there. I keep telling her she's got crabs, but she's not having none of it. Yeah, just reel it in, Kirst. I think if there was oats on it, you'd you'd know about it. Oh, bit of weight. Sonic, this is the um, the 13 foot Sonic Black. It's it's possibly a bit heavy for this sort of work, to be fair. But I haven't got another rod that's lighter, other than my bash rod and my spinning rod. Um, I will get one, but just not yet. It does, it's got great bite detection on it, though. It does show bites up really well. Weed fish. Guys like being back at Silith. <laughs> One thing it is worth mentioning 
people will leave bait out, and I've seen it. They'll leave it out for hours, literally hours. What I generally find is, if you've not had a bite within 15, 20 minutes, really change bait. Because the bait washes through, it washes all the scent out. And it just, it just, it's not an effective bait. If I've not had a bite on a particular bait within 15 or 20 minutes, I'll change the bait. Now, sometimes, if I'm, especially if I'm fishing for cod, what I will do is I'll add to it. So, the worm that was on that originally, if there's a little bit left on it, just push it up the line and just add to it. But every, like I say, every 15, 20 minutes, it's really the change of bait. Just adds a new scent to it. Perfectly hooked. Put yourself in the finger. <laughs> Always a good idea. Always important to respect the fish as well. When you're handling them. Try and handle them. I know, you know, even in the winter, the darkest depths of winter, it's cold, but try and handle them with wet hands. Wet hands, or at the very least, a damp cloth, a wet cloth. Don't use a dry one, try not to use dry hands because it, it strips all the, um, the slime off the fish. And the slime's the, it's the protective coating and it effectively burns them, it's like, it's like putting acid on. So it's always, you know, it's always nice just to respect the fish, keep your hands wet, just let them go gently. Packed up at Alan Math, the weed died off, which was brilliant. And so did the fish. Um, a couple more little rattles, but nothing worth mentioning. So, even though we're not really equipped for it, well, Kirsty is, um, me and Gaz are pushing it a bit. We're moving up to, uh, up to Craster. Nice. Extremely rough ground up there. Very rough ground, but with the sea being so rough, there's a very good chance of a couple of coddling. But in the harbour at Craster itself, you do tend to get quite a few, um, quite a few coaling. It's just down the edge of the harbour wall. So what I'm thinking is, the main guys only having light rods. The main guys will drop down the edge. Small hooks, worm baits, well it's good worm baits, that's all we've got, but small hooks down the side. And then on Kirsty's rod, what I'll do is I'll put, um, put a, a, a pulley panel on with a, uh, with a lead lift, just chuck it out a bit further. Hopefully there'll be a coddling knocking around, put quite a big worm bait on. But we'll, um, We'll see how it goes, we'll give it a couple hours, because you can fish it a couple of hours back down there as well, on the, you know, on the ebb. So, we're on our way there now, we should be there, hopefully, it's two o'clock in the morning now. I think we'll be there for about quarter past, twenty past. And uh, I'll catch you when we get there. We arrived at Craster, the seas are it's definitely definitely rough which is ideal for the cod. Unfortunately, me and Gaz are seriously undergun. I've got a bass rod. He's got his little uh, sentry which is not much more than a bass rod to be fair. Only person that's actually got a rod that will cope with is Kirsty. So, quite close in it's not all that rough. Uh, the further out you get the rougher it gets. So I've put Kirsty a big bait on. I've actually only got rag so I'm not that confident. Should get some coldies, but I don't think we'll, be, I don't think we'll get the cod. Um, 
So I've put Kirsty a big bait on and I've, I've, I've lobbed it about 40 yards out into the middle of the channel. This is a, where you've got the two piers, there's a channel. Me and Gaz, I'm just, just off to the right there slightly, and Gaz is just off the edge of the pier there. So we'll see how it goes. Kirsty just had a very, uh, a very nice bite on on the Sonic there. As you can see, the Sonic barely moving. Man and Gazes just all over the shop, just just swinging around. No, don't think it's coming back. Right, well, we finished fishing at Craster. Tide started and we started getting knocks, but it's, like, it's more than likely just crabs, stuff like that. Um, not, I didn't end up catching anything. Absolutely knackered. So it was off the bed for me. Um, Kirsty's already away and asleep near enough she slept all the way back it's now an hour and 15 minutes drive home um sorry there wasn't more fish it's just how it goes if it was that easy they'd call it catching not fishing so anyway don't forget to hit the like button subscribe i'll see you guys later